for joining us again today. We're thinking about God this week. The name God doesn't give us much to work with, does it? God can mean so many different things to different people. As we thought about yesterday, God can be an impersonal force. Or God can be defined by a, a traditional religion. God can be, to some people, an imagined superstitious idea. God is more a title, really, than a name, more a broad idea covering all sorts of possible understandings. Yesterday, we reflected on that famous line from Psalms in our Bible, be still and know that I am God. It's a command or an invitation from the one true God talked about in the Old Testament to come and to know him. We briefly recognise that in our Old Testament, God revealed himself to and was known as the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. So if you spend time in their stories, you're going to begin to find out more about the one true God, what he's like and how he made himself known to those three particular people. But what else does the Old Testament tell us about God? Well, for the rest of this week, we're going to think about some names of God found in the Old Testament text and stories. In our time, we tend to name people using names that we like or names that were significant to our family. Most of us have a vague idea that our names might have some kind of meaning. Um, so, for instance, we named our boys Noah and Isaac. And Noah means peace and Isaac means laughter. And it's been quite interesting to watch them grow up and their characters develop because Noah is definitely the quieter, more peaceful of the two children. And Isaac has always been quick to laugh and in quite an infectious way, quite an infectious way. But in the Bible, names have real significance. Names tell you something about that person. Uh, perhaps they describe their character or, or some event or some place at the very least. Names are important in the Bible. Names can tell people apart. In the time of the Old Testament, in amongst the nations and tribes around Israel, there were many gods. People were talking about gods all the time. You went into anybody's home, they would have had shrines to different gods. Some of those gods' names you'll recognise, Dagon, and Baal, and Molech, and Asherah. So it was vital that Israel had a name for their god. To distinguish him from the other parody gods around. Names can also establish personal relationships. The first thing you do when you meet somebody new is ask them their name and you offer yours in return. Names can also demonstrate the kind of relationship we have. So I'm called dad, I'm called a son, I'm called a husband, I'm called a brother, I'm called an uncle. Those titles speak of uh, relationships I have with particular people. The way I relate to them is different to other people because of those titles, those names. Well, today we're going to look at a name given to Moses by the Lord God. We're going to look at that famous encounter as God makes himself known to Moses through that burning bush. And that name is Yahweh. Or we might use the word Jehovah. The name is actually used more than 6,800 times in the Old Testament. The name Yahweh was first used back in early parts of Genesis, um, speaking of the one true God. And in today's reading, God meets Moses many years later, obviously, in this holy, powerful moment as this bush, bush burns, but doesn't burn up. So Moses has to take off his sandals in this holy moment. And it this moment seems to mark a turning point, a moving to a new chapter in humanity's relationship with the one true God. Let's read Exodus 3, 1 to 14. Exodus 3, 1 to 14. One day Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led the flock far into the wilderness and came to Sinai, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of a bush. Moses stared in amazement. Though the bush was engulfed in flames, it didn't burn up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. 
Why isn't that bush burning up? I must go and see. When the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God called to him from the middle of the bush. Moses, Moses, here I am, Moses replied. Do not come any closer, the Lord warned. Take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. When Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I've heard their cries of distress because of the harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am aware of their suffering. So I've come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. It is a land flowing with milk and honey. A land where the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites and Jebusites now live. Look, the cry of the people of Israel has reached me and I've seen how harshly the Egyptians abuse them. Now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people Israel out of Egypt. But Moses protested to God. Who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people? of Israel out of Egypt. God answered, I will be with you. And this is your sign that I am the one who has sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God at this very mountain. But Moses protested, if I go to the people of Israel and tell them the God of your ancestors has sent me, sent, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, they will ask me, what is his name? Then what should I tell them? God replied to Moses, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say this to the people of Israel. Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my eternal name, my name to remember for all generations. So Yahweh, Yahweh is the name the Lord God revealed to Moses. It's a name that one writer says speaks of personality and relationship and covenant and eternity. In Hebrew, the name consists of four letters, Y-H-W-H. It's often translated as the Lord in English Bible translations. The name Yahweh is based on the name I am who I am, and it can mean eternal. But it came from this moment on to be seen as incredibly holy. From this moment on, when Moses had to take off his sandals and he hid his face before this awesome meeting with God, who was making himself known. The name was seen as so holy, in fact, that it couldn't be pronounced out loud. And so it was replaced with the word Adonai, Lord, when the Jews read the name in their scriptures. Now, I wonder, thinking about this moment, thinking about this name of the Lord God, I wonder if we have lost that sense of holiness that comes with his name. How do we address God in our prayers? God is so generic. We've talked about that. It means so many different things. Well, I guess we address God in different ways, don't we? We might say, dear Lord or, or dear Father. But maybe it matters how we address him. Something for us to think about. But here, it's another good moment to stop this week and be still and know that he is God, our Lord. And to stop and do so with that sense of awe and wonder that Yahweh can meet with us and make himself known to us like he did with Moses. Let's pray. Lord, we come in stillness and in wonder and in awe. We recognise you are holy. You are beyond us, worthy of our worship. We pray that we might recapture that sense of wonder and awe in our prayers, in our worship, in our lives. Lord God, we thank you.